مظلوم کا کیسا یاد آیا یس رب کی اداسی یاد آئی اور اجرا مدینہ یاد آیا بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بائیو نے ریکویسٹ کرو ہم اچھے کہ جرہ کا آگڑا ہوئے جے تھی جے بائیو پچھی تھی آوے تو لوگا نے یہ سوامل احسن رحم اللہ من قرا سورة الفاتحہ أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحسي نعماه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي بعدا فلا يرى وقربا فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين وشفي المظلمين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد ولا أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أضحب الله عنهم الرجس وتحرهم تطحيرا واللانة الدائمة الباقي لعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم المؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض يأمرون بالمعروف وينحون للمنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله سأولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم صلوات من قال I would like to begin with conveying our condolences to the Prophet of Islam to the Aima especially to the Imam of the time, Hazrat Mahdi Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif. On the beginning of the Azaf Sayyid al-Shuhada for this year, the moon has been sighted, and this is the first eve of the Muharram. I just arrived this evening, just about an hour and a half ago, from a long journey, but I would like to take this opportunity tonight to talk about the importance of Azaf Sayyid al-Shuhada and link that with the theme and this topic on which I would like to talk in the nights following, inshallah. The topic that we have in mind is the issue of spiritual development, how to maintain our spiritual health. When we talk about the heart, not the physical one, but the spiritual one. But as a preamble to that, let us talk about this issue and link that with the importance of the Azar itself. 
The Aza of Sayyidina Shahada, the word Aza itself is from Arabic. When you add the word Dari, Aza Dari becomes Farsi and Urdu or Gujarati. And basically it means to mourn and grieve the tragedy of Karbala. When we look at, look at this phenomenon of Azadari, this is something which is part of the Shia community from early days, after the events of Karbala. This is not a cultural issue, it is not confined to one ethnic Shia community. You go to any part of the Shia world, whatever language they speak, whatever color they have, whatever cultural and uh, you know, ethnic differences they would have, all Shias around the world are united when it comes to the Aza of Sayyidu Shohada. So this is not a cultural issue, this is actually a religious issue. And this is something so important that many times we do not realize the importance of this Aza of Sayyidu Shohada because many times we take things for granted. Only if you look at situations where they don't have this system, that is where you'll come to realize what we have. This is actually an institution of mass education. Very unique, and there is nothing like it. You know, we have programs during the Islamic calendar for the whole year. Sometimes we think about important issues, we invite the scholars to our centers in order to get the people to come and listen to those scholars. We actually have to start this whole process of quote unquote marketing the program. You know, flyers are made, announcements are made. You know, there are different ways where we try to get the people in to come and listen to the speech to the best of the sc uh, scholars and the speakers. This is where you see that the organizers on those kinds of program actually have to work hard to get the people in. But when it comes to the Aza of Sayyidah Shohada in Muharram, it is not the organizers who have to wor worry about people will come in or not. It is the people who look for the time. When is the program going to start? What are the timings? They don't even care about the speakers. People don't come for the Azaz say the Shahada for me or others. They come for the love of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And this is something very unique. This is where you have to basically maximize the, the benefit of this gathering and the programs that we have. But let us always keep in mind that this is a blessing given to us by Imam Hussain alayhi salam, established by his sister and strengthened by his son, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wa salam. And the reason is very obvious. Because when we talk about the Azaw of Sayyid al-Shahada, there is an attachment that we have as Shias to this process on emotional level. It doesn't mean we don't have that connection and attachment on, int on the int intellectual level. But in Aza, we are more pulled towards the Aza of Sayyidah Shahada on an emotional level, and that is actually the secret to the survival of this system from day one till now. The Prophet himself, in one of the ahadiths that we have, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he looked at his grandson, and these are his words, where he says, Inna li qatl Hussein bin Ali. He's predicting about the future, what will happen. And he says, verily, when it comes to the martyrdom of Hussein bin Ali, inna li qatl Hussein bin Ali, hararatan fi qulubil mu'mineen. There is a harara, there is a warmth in the hearts of the people. La tabrudu abada, that warmth in the hearts of the people for the tragedy of Karbala 
will never ever become cool. And that is the mo momentum which is there, which will continue inshallah. And this is the reason why we see that when it comes to the enemies of Ahlul Bayt, the enemies of the Shias of Ahlul Bayt, the first target that they have is actually the Azaw of Sayyidul Shahada. The whole process of, you know, trying to attack the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam from the days of Mutawakkil, to try to prevent the people from Ziyarat of Arba'een the way it was done by Saddam during our time also. And the way, you know, these processions of Azadari in the Shia, you know, communities in different parts of the Shia world are attacked. This is the reason that they know this is their lifeline of the Shia community. The Shias learn about their mazhab, about their values. They get attached to that religion because of the aza of Sayyidah Shahada alayhi salatu wa salam. Salawat There are many, many examples. I don't want to go into examples here. In the modern times, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you one example. After the first Gulf War, when Saddam invaded Kuwait, and then the American um, you know, forces and their, uh, uh, their allies came in to push him out, you know, there was an uprising in the southern part of uh, Iraq, and this was done by the Shias. But then when the Americans realized that while well, Shias, you know, we might not see eye to eye on issues, they preferred to let Saddam be there. And because of the zulm done at that time, the Iraqi Shias in thousands became refugees, not only in, in Iran, but also in Syria, in Turkey, even in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, they were not allowed to settle down normally. They were kept in refugee camps. Gradually, United Nations comes in and process these Iraqi refugees and settle them gradually in different parts of Europe and North America. If you look at the growth of the Shia community in North America now, you will see from the time of the first Gulf War, the number of the Shia communities has you know, increased many, many times, more than before that. And you will see that most of these Iraqis who were settled there were as refugees. They were poor. They didn't have that much resources. But I'll share you, with you one, one story. I was inv invited by a friend of mine who knew me from many, many years in a city known as Utah in Salt Lake City. Utah is the, uh, is the state. Salt Lake, Salt Lake City is the, uh, is the city. And he asked me to come during the ayam of Azai at least for, you know, one night or one day. I was in Calif California those days for the Azai of Sayyidah Shuhada. And I agreed to go there. He told me that there were only three Shia families that he knew. There was no Shia center, no Imam Bara, no masjid, no gathering, nothing. Nobody had a list of the Shias in that city. He decided the afternoon that I was coming there, he rented a hall in the university and put a small ad in the newspaper saying that we are going to have a gathering in the name of Hussein bin Ali. What was amazing for the host, who didn't know more than three Shia families there, when we reached there, there were about 100 Shias gathered in that hall. Majority of them Iraqi refugees. They also, you know, when they hear the name of Imam Hussain salam, they remember their own home. And that gathering in the name of Imam Hussain salam became the beginning of the formation of the Shia community in, the, in Salt Lake City. When I visited them a year after that, they had already formed an organization, rented a small, humble, you know, place, to have their Dua Kumail programs on Thursdays and Viladat and Wafat and the gatherings for Imam Hussain alayhi salam. The point is that Hussein is the magnet for the Shia community even now in far, land, far away lands. Salawat upon
And so when we talk about Aza of Sayyid al-Shuhada, this is a very important you know, institution in our community and in our faith. And we have to maximize the benefit that we can deri derive from it. In order to understand the purpose and the mission of Aza of Sayyid al-Shuhada, we cannot separate that from the purpose of the mission of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Whatever was his mission, that would be the objective and the purpose of the Aza of Sayyid al-Shuhada. Hussein did not do whatever he do, did for one thing and you do for something else. They should be in sync with one another. And so let us go and ask Imam Hussain alayhi salam himself. We don't want to go to the philosophers or historians or the jurists and the ulama. No. We go directly to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and we ask him, why did you take this step in order to present such a great sacrifice in the name of Islam? Why did you do this? It's interesting that we have actually a wasiyyat, a written document, a will by Imam Hussain alayhi salam that he wrote before he left Medina. He left that with his brother Muhammad Hanafiya. And that is not a normal personal will that we would write about our own assets and how to divide it and what to do with my you know, obligations and where should I be buried and things like that. No. This was not a personal wasiyah that Imam wrote. This was actually a mission statement of the movement of Hussein bin Ali alayhi salatu was salam. Salawat, Brother Iqbal. He basically explained, and it's amazing that he did this in a written form, not just in words, why he is doing this, why he is taking such an important step, even though he is going to lose everything as far as his family is concerned. And this wasiyyat can be divided into three parts. One begins, the first part begins with negation, the second one is affirmation, and the third talks about the method and justification from religious point of view that what he is doing is actually the right thing to do. He begins by negation. You know, just as we start the kalima with la ilaha, we don't only say, you know, Allah. We start with la ilaha. Hussein bin Ali knew that there will be writers and historians and muhaddisin attached to the darabar of Banu Umayyah who will try to ascribe motives to Hussein bin Ali which are not true. In order to negate that, right in the beginning he says, Lam akhruj ashiran wala batiran wala mufsidan wala zalima. He negates four motives that people can ascribe to his movement, what he was doing. He says, I did not do this. Ashiran, you know, to seek adventure. You know, there are some uh, Sunni scholars, even now, some of the educated ones, they compare Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Imam Hassan alayhi salam and they say, oh, Hassan was a very peaceful man, very wise man, because he did the sulah. But Hussein was very emotional. He didn't have that wisdom of his brother, Nauzubillah. They do not realize that whenever Imam Hussain, whenever Rasulullah used to talk about them, he used to actually describe both of them mostly together. There is no difference between them. Hassan is Hassan, Hussein is also Hassan, only he's younger in age, and therefore even the name becomes Hussein. You know, the word Hussein means the same thing as Hassan. It just means, you know, in English sometimes you have the name. Um, Bush the senior and Bush the jun junior. So Hassan and Hassan, they are both Hassan. The word Hussein in Arabic is Tasghir, means the younger Hassan. So they are same. But these scholars actually would like to, you know, put down the stand of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and they say he was emotional. An Imam says, I did not do this ashiran out of seeking adv adventure. Have you ever seen anybody who is going for 
adventurous mission where there is a danger of losing his life, would a person take his women and children with him? No. He would go with his army. But the fact that the children were with Hussein, this proves that Hussein was not seeking an adventure. Wala Batiran, he says, I'm not doing this out of arrogance. Why would he need to do something, you know, out of arrogance? He is Sayyidah Shabab Ahl Jannah. In the words of Rasulullah, what, does, what more does he want? When the Prophet says, you know, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn, Hussein doesn't need anyone's, you know, credentials for, for himself. And so it was neither for adventure seeking nor for arrogance. Wala mafsidan wala valiman. He says, I didn't do this to create chaos and, you know, disorder and problems in the society. And I did not do this to be unjust to anyone. Wala valiman. I'm not even being unjust to Yazid when I'm opposing him. Even my opposition to Yazid is based on adl and justice. And so after negating these four motives which could be ascribed to Hussein bin Ali, then he goes to the positive side and he explains, إِنَّمَا خَرَجْتُ لِطَلَبِ الْإِسْلَافِ فِي أُمَّةِ جَدِّي My reason is that I have st taken this stand for only one purpose. Innama there is to emphasize only. My only purpose is to seek a reformation of the community of my grandfather. And this is where I would like to a little bit talk about this concept of Islam and reform in order to understand the reality of this concept as far as Hussein ibn Ali and the challenges that we face now as the Muslim and Shia community in the modern times. Salawat Pranayak Bara. Imam says that I have risen against Yazid. Or I have taken this stand to seek reformation. Islah means reform, to, to, uh, reformation. What does it mean? Islah means basically the situation of something or some person or an entity is no more salah, there is fasad. So you have salah on one side and fasad on the opposite side. Fasad is translated normally as corruption. What it means is that something which was salih, which was salim, which was sahih, which was normal, which was healthy, which was good. Now something has happened in it that it has become fasid. It is no more the way it was supposed to be. You know, sometimes even if you look at um, a food item, when it is rotten, we say it has become fasid. Before that, it was good. So you have salah on one side and you have fasad on the other, other side. And when something becomes bad, something becomes corrupt, something changes negatively, then what do you do? One way is to do islah, which means you bring it back to its normal situation. This is the meaning of reform. Sometimes, you know, we actually take reform in the meaning of Going with the times. There is a need for change. Islah does not necessarily mean change for something new. Islah is always there, you know, when there is fasad. When something becomes fasid, when something becomes corrupt, when something loses its color and its gesture or its normal situation, then there is a need to reform it to bring it back to its original situation. This is the meaning of Islam. Not the way sometimes it is used as a reformation in the Christian theology. This is something which we have to realize. That Islam means something which is far said, you would like to bring it back to the 
normal situation. Salawat pa na ikbara. The deen of Islam is something which is very solid. The message that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought is very stable and firm. There is no issue of Islam in the deen of Islam. Something that our modern intellectuals get confused. What does Imam Hussain al Islam say? He says, Innama kharajtu li talab al Islam. I have risen to seek reformation. Reformation of what? Reformation of Islam or reformation of the Ummah. His words are, li talab al Islam fi ummati jaddi. So the facade that Imam recognized where there was need for Islam and reformation was not in the religion of Islam, it was in the Ummah. It is the Muslims who had moved away from the true teachings of Islam. Islam was still there. It was still Sahih. It was still Salim. It was still healthy and right. It was the Ummah which had moved away from the true Islam. And the object of Islam and reformation is not the religion, but the people. It is the people who have to be reformed and to be changed so that they can come back to the true values of the Islam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So yes, Imam Hussain salam wanted to bring about reformation. But it was not reformation of the deen of Islam, rather it was the reformation of the Ummah. And this theme of Imam Hussain salam continued. Azadari is a method of reforming. Not Islam, but reforming the people. To bringing them closer to the Islam that Hussain Sacrifice everything for it. And this is where Imam Hussain alayhi salam goes further after negating the motives which are wrong and then explaining what he is doing. Then he actually comes to explain the justification on the religious ground that there is a principle in the Sharia which I'm following in doing a reformation of the Ummah of my grandfather. And this is where he says, Uridu, continuing the wasiyat. Uridu an a'amura bil ma'roof wa anihiya anil munkar. He says, I would like to do amr bil ma'roof and nahiya al munkar. I would like to promote good in the society. And I would like to prevent evil from the society. What it means is that in the eyes of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, the ma'roof that Islam had brought, Muslims had forgotten it. Maybe not everything, but many important issues from the ma'roof and the good teachings of Islam that Muslims had forgotten it. Or they were doing it in a wrong way. And that Muslims were doing many things which are mun munkarat, which were forbidden in Islam, but it was becoming normal in the ummah at that time. And Hussein took the stand he rose in order to bring about reformation, to bring people back to Ma'roof and to keep them away from Munkar. And this is a continuous process of reformation in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah, ayat number 71 actually talks about the issue of al-amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar these are two social principles in islam which are so important that when we look at ourselves as individuals that is one issue but when we look at ourselves as a community we have to realize that amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar becomes the top priority for any community to survive as a muslim community 
if we don't have amr bil ma'ruf and nahi munkar if we do not implement the principles of al amr bil ma'ruf and an nahi al munkar a community and a society which claims to be a muslim society will not be able to maintain their is their islamic identity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah tauba when he talks about the community not about individuals he begins with the words al mu'minun wal mu'minat the believing men and the be believing women ba'dhum awliya wa ba'd they are wali of one another they are actually bound to one another on the basis of their deen and madhhab they are friends of one another what is the demand of the friends in deen what is the first demand if you look at the quran you will see in many places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talks about ma'ruf and good things begins with namaz and then zakat and then other things but in this ayat where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a community the order of the values has changed he says al mu'minun wal mu'minat ba'dhum awliya wa ba'd the believing men and the believing women are friends of one another what is the demand of this wilayah that they have ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhauna 'anil munkar the very first demand of this relationship that we have with one another as brethren in faith is that we promote ma'ruf and good among one, one another and we discourage one another from munkar وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to the issue of establishing namaz and giving the charity. Most of the ayat talk about namaz and zakat first. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's talking about the identity of a Muslim community he begins with أَمْرَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَّهِ الْمُنْكَرِ Then he says يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ وَيُطِيعُونَ Then as if to summarize the whole process. He says, وَيُطِيعُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ In short, they obey Allah and His Messenger. أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحُمُهُمُ اللَّهِ These are the people that Allah hopefully will shower His Rahma and mercy on them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ He is powerful and wise. Salawat for the next So Imam Musa salam justified his movement, his revolution, and his mission in the name of Al-Amr bil-Ma'roof wa nahi al-Munkar. For us, sitting here and doing the Azadari, our purpose of Azadari cannot be different from the purpose of the mission of Hussein bin Ali. If he did it that for Islam of the Ummah, we do the azadari for Islam of ourselves. To make ourselves better. Better Shia, better Muslims. If he did this, did this in the name of Al-Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi al-Munkar, our azadari should be based on the principles of promoting what is good and pre preventing what is evil. And by doing this, Imam Hussain alayhi salam himself Actually, in the, in the tafsir of this ayat from Surah Tawbah, there is a hadith of the Imam where he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually has, you know, preferred Amr bil ma'roof and Nahil Munkar over namaz and zakat because he says if we do Amr bil ma'roof and Nahil Munkar as a community, then namaz will be established automatically. It will flow, follow through. People will give sadaqat and zakat and khums and other charities automatically. You don't have to worry about it. You know, these days when we travel, especially if it's a long journey in the plane, the pilot doesn't sit there with the steering the whole time. It's only when they actually take off until they reach to the altitude that they want. And once they have fixed the airline in the direction they want to go, they put the whole plane on autopilot. Then they relax. They're not allowed to sleep. You know, they keep their eyes open, but then the machine is going because the destination has been fixed. 
the altitude has been fixed, and the, you know, the plane is going on. When we talk about Islam, when we talk about establishing the values of Islam in our communities, if we start with al-amr bil ma'roof and nahi al-munkar, it's just like we are putting the community on autopilot. If al-amr bil ma'roof and nahi al-munkar is there, everything else will take its own place. Namaz would be done, fasting would be done, zakat and khums and sadaqat and khairat would be fulfilled, people will go to hajj, everything will be done. But sometimes we forget the priorities. You know, we talk about all these other issues individually, emphasize on it. We do not realize that the key of the secret of reformation is al-amr bil ma'roof and nahi an al-munkar. Salawat for me, Of course, Imam Hussain wanted to make clear that what he is doing is not a bid'ah. You know, the way the Wahhabis and Salafis always like to use that term. This is not an innovation that Imam Hussain is doing. He's actually following the same path. And so he ends by saying, وَعَسِيرُ وَعَسِيرَ بَسِيرَةِ جَدِّي وَعَبِي عَلِي بِنَا بِطَالِبِ by doing all this I mentioned earlier, he says, I would like to follow and continue the path of my grandfather and my father Ali bin Abi Talib. This is where we see our line is very direct, very short, very clear. We don't have others in between. If you go through Hussein, you reach to Hassan and then Ali. When you reach to Ali, you reach to Rasulullah, and we, when you reach to Rasulullah, we re, you reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat from the Iqbal. But let me briefly, before I go to the Urdu part of the Majlis, inshallah, last 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes will do in Urdu, uh, in, uh, but the major part would be in English. What was the facade that Imam identified in the Ummah? That he wanted to do the Islam. What was the corruption? Was it namaz? Were people not praying those days? No, they were doing the namaz. Was it fasting? They used to fast. Were they not going for hajj? They used to go for hajj all the time. Were they not paying their dues? whether it's zakat or khums or other charities. Even if they didn't want, the khulafa would force them to do that because they had to run their own business of administering their khilafat. So all these things were being done. Was jihad not being done? You know, during the time of the khilafat, the Muslim empire was expanded by jihad. Not necessarily expansion of the religion of Islam, but the Muslim empire, yes. There is a big difference between expansion of the religion of Islam and expansion of the Muslim empire. That was done by military force, no doubt about it. Nobody can deny that. And so what was the facade and the problem that Imam Hussain realized and he wanted to do the Islam? What was the problem in the Ummah? It was not Namaz, it was not Roza, it was not Hajj, it was not Zakat and Khums, it was not Jihad. It was the fundamental issue of recognizing the leader appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was actually indifference of the people that just within 50 years after the wafat of Rasulullah, somebody comes and sits on the seat of Khilafat who openly challenges the wahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Yazid in the Darbar of, uh, of Sham said, you know, لَعِبَتْ حَاشِمٌ بِالْمُلْكِ فَلَا خَبَرٌ جَعَ وَلَا وَحْيٌ نَزَلْ That the Prophet and his family actually staged a drama. There was no news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there was no wahi which came down. So he's denying the wahi of the Qur'an. He's actually, you know, denying the nubuwwat of Rasulullah. And yet he is Khalifatul Muslimin. And yet the people are silent and accepting him as the Khalifa of Rasulullah. It was this 
indifference of the Ummah in front of a person like Yazid that Hussein ibn Ali could not tolerate. And he says, I'm going to do something so powerful that is going to shock, shock the Muslim Ummah to come out of their ghaflat and their you know, uh, indifference. And Imam did this through his shahadat and by bringing the children and women with, with him. And that's a longer topic, inshallah, we'll talk about it probably on the eve of Ashura. But this is where we come to realize that Imam Hussain alayhi salam, what he had done was actually was done in order to open the eyes of the people about the most fundamental issue of leadership after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salawat from it. Muharram ki azaa ka silsila shuru ho chuka hai. Aur aaj tamhidi majlis, majlis mein maqsad qiyam e husaini alayhi salam aur maqsad azadari ke baare mein kuch baatein aapke saamne peesh karna cha rahe thay. Khususan imam ko joh wasiyat nama hai uski ek brief uh, commentary aapke saamne hamne peesh ki hai. لیکن اسی سلسلے کو ذرا آگے بڑھاتے ہوئے کہ امام حسین علیہ السلام نے اتنا بڑا قدم جو اٹھایا تھا سب کچھ قربان کر دیا یہ نماز اور روزے کی بات نہیں تھی حج اور زکاة کی بات نہیں تھی در حقیقت اصل معاملہ جو ہے ہدایت کا تھا کہ امت جو ہے انحطاط اور تنزلی اور فساد کے اس لیول پر پہنچ چکی ہے the downfall of the Ummah had reached to the level that Yazid Jaisa Shah Masnad Khalafat per bait hai wahi or nubuwat ka inkar kare or Ummah joh hai khamosh rahe Imam ke liye asal muamala rasal fasad Ummah me Ummah ki khamoshi thi or is liye Imam Hussain alayhi salam ne yek ilan kar diya ke hum woh kaam karenge ke امت کی آنکھ جو ہے کھلے یہ بیدار ہوں یہ سمجھیں کہ ان معاملات کو اس طرح سے ایکسپٹ نہیں کر سکتے ہیں صرف امام حسین علیہ السلام تھے جو اسلام کو اس وقت بچا سکتے تھے اور یہ بات صرف حملوں کی نہیں ہے خود یزید بن معاویہ جانتا تھا کہ امام حسین علیہ السلام کی ویلیو کیا ہے ان کا سٹیٹس کیا ہے ان کے پریسٹیج کیا ہے ان کی منزلت کو سمجھنا ہو آپ دیکھیں معاویہ نے اپنے آخری دور میں مسلمانوں سے بیعت لے لی تھی کہ میرے بعد خلیفہ جو ہے وہ میرا بیٹا یزید ہوگا جتنے گورنرز تھے مصر سے لے کے حجاز اور یمن اور عراق اور فارس تمام جو ہے پبلک نے آلیڈی بیعت دے دی تھی اب آپ کہیں گے بائی فورس تھی اس زمانے میں خیر آزادی تو ہوتی ہی نہیں تھی لہذا یہ کوئی مسئلہ ہی نہیں ہے کہ آیا بائی فورس تھے یا کمپلشن یا فریڈم کی ڈیموکریسی کی تو بات نہیں تھی بھئی وہ پریزیڈنٹ بوش کے سیکنڈ ٹرم میں آپ دیکھیں فلوریڈا میں وہ صرف ففٹی پوائنٹ کچھ پوائنٹ سے جیت گیا اور اس نے جیت مانی یہاں تو معاویہ نے وہ کام کیا تھا کہ یزید کو آلیڈی نائنٹی نائن پوائنٹ نائنٹی نائن پرسنٹ ووٹس مل چکے تھے بیعت تو مل چکے تھے نا اس کو فکر کیا تھا اگر حسین ابن علی بیعت نہ کریں اس سے فکر کیا تھی لیکن اس کو فکر تھی خلیفہ بننے کے بعد فرسٹ ایگزیکیٹیو اوڈر اگر کہا جائے یہ یزید نے لکھا ہے وہ معاویہ کے مدینہ کے گورنر کے نام اور فرسٹ اوڈر یہی تھا کہ حسین ابن علی سے بیعت طلب کرو اگر بیعت کریں تو ٹھیک ہے نہ کریں تو ان کا سر قلم کر کے ہمارے پاس بھیج دو قویشن یہ ہے کہ وہ شخص جس کے باپ نے اس کے لیے نائنٹی نائن پوائنٹ نائن پرسن بیعت آلیڈی حاصل کر چکا ہے اسے حسین کی کیا فکر تھی بات یہ ہے کہ خود یزید کی نظر میں بھی 
حکومت کو حاصل کرنا کچھ اور تھا لیکن اس حکومت کو جائز بنانا کچھ اور تھا وہ جانتا ہے کہ میرے باپ نے حکومت تو مجھے دے دیئے انتظام کر لیا ہے لیکن یہ جائز حکومت نہیں ہے وہ جب ترازو کے دونوں میزان کو دیکھتا ہے اور ترازو کے ایک طرف وہ امت کی نائنٹی نائن پونٹ نائن پرسن بیعت کو رکھتا ہے اور دوسری طرف حسین ابن علی کا زیرو پونٹ زیرو ون انکار کو رکھتا ہے تو وہ جانتا ہے کہ حسین کا انکار زیادہ وزنی ہے لہذا اس کو فکر تھی کہ بھئی امت کی بیعت تو مل چکی ہے لیکن پھر بھی ہمیں حکومت کرنے کا جواز نہیں ملے گا جب تک حسین ابن علی بیعت نہ کرے گا یزید خود یہ جانتا تھا اور حسین نے اپنے نانا کو مایوس نہیں کیا حسین جانتے تھے کہ نانا کے دین اب علموس اپنی زندگی کے آخری مرحلے پر ہے ختم ہو جائے گا بچا ہے تو صرف حسین کے انکار کے وجہ سے بچا ہے اور اس لئے جب گورنر نے بلایا ہے اور جب پیغام ملا ہے امام کو امام مسجد میں تھے اس وقت شام کا وقت تھا امام نے قاسد سے کہا کہ اس سے کہو ٹھیک ہے ہم آ رہے ہیں تھوڑی دیر میں اور امام نے کہا کہ یقیناً کوئی اہم معاملہ ہے اس لئے کہ شام کے وقت جو ہے گورنر کبھی ملاقات نہیں کرتا ہے لوگ لہذا ضرور کوئی سیریس معاملہ ہے اور سیریس میں اس کو سمجھتے ہوئے امام ڈائریکلی ولید کے گھر نہیں جاتے ہیں بلکہ پہلے آتے ہیں اپنے گھر اور جوانان بنو حاشم کو تیار کرتے ہیں کہ تم اپنی تلواروں کو لے کے آؤ اندر آنے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے ہم اندر جائیں گے معاملات کو دیکھیں گے کیا بات ہے اگر میری آواز بلند نہ ہو تو سمجھنا کہ حسین صحیح سالم ہے لیکن اگر ہمیں خطرہ محسوس ہوا تو ہم آواز کو بلند کریں گے اور اس وقت تم اندر آ جانا میری حفاظت کے لیے یہ جوانان بنو حاشم باہر بیٹھے رہے امام آتے ہیں ولید کے گھر آپ واقعات کو جانتے ہیں بہت مختصر بیان کر کے ہم آگے بڑھنا چاہیں گے لنک دینا ہے ہمارے موضوع سے کہ امام کے سامنے جب ولید نے البتہ وہاں ولید تنہا نہیں تھا بلکہ مدینہ میں بنو امیہ کے خاندان کا جو بزرگ تھا مروان بن حکم تھرڈ خلیفہ کا دماغ وہاں بھی موجود تھا اور جب ولید نے خط سنایا ہے امام حسین علیہ السلام نے اور یہ حسین کا کمال ہے کہ اس وقت سے لے کے آشور کے دن تک حسین ابن علی نے کسی بھی ہسٹورین کو یہ موقع نہیں دیا ہے کہ اگریشن اور وائلنس کا پہلا قدم حسین نے اٹھایا ہو مدینہ میں بھی جب ولید نے وہ خط سنایا یزید کا اس وقت امام نے معاملے کو ٹال دیا یہ کہتے ہوئے کہ دیکھو یہ معاملہ ایسا ہے کہ ہم یہ پرائیویسی میں بیٹھ کے ہم جواب نہیں دیں گے تم کل جو ہے پبلک میں مسجد میں اسی میسیج کو ریپیٹ کرنا ہم اپنا جواب پبلک میں تمہیں دیں گے ولید کائنڈ آف پیس فول آدمی تھا وہ تیار ہو گیا اس نے کہا ٹھیک ہے کل بات کریں گے لیکن وہاں ایک خبیص بیٹھا تھا مروان بن حکم وہ ولید سے کہتا ہے کہ اگر حسین ابھی نہ ملے تو پھر نہیں ملے یا تو ان سے بیعت لو یا ان کا سر قلم کرو اب یہاں ایگریشن کا آغاز ہو رہا ہے حسین سے نہیں مروان کے اس جملے سے کہ یا تو بیعت لو یا ان کا سر قلم کرو اور یہاں پر امام نے اب احساس کیا کہ اب یہاں جو ہے کل تک معاملات کو چھوڑنے کی گنجائش نہیں ہے اور امام جواب دیتے ہیں فوراں کہ اے ولی تم جانتے ہو انہا حل بیت النبو و معدن الرسال و مختلف الملائکہ و محل الرحمہ ولی تم جانتے ہو ہمارے بیک گراؤنڈ کو ہم نبوت کے گھرانے کے فرد ہیں 
हमारा वो घर है जहां मलायका आते जाते थे हमारे घर में वही नाजिल होती थी खुदा वंद आलम ने हमारे घर को रहमत की जगह करार दी है ये हमारा बैकग्राउंड है और तुम जिसकी बेत के डिमांड कर रहे हो वो कौन है वह रज व यजीद रजुल फासिक ये फासिक और गुनागार इंसान है शारबुलखमर जब पब्लिकली ओपनली शराब पीता है मलिन बिलफिसक अपने गुनाहों को पब्लिकली अंजाम देता है वक़ातुलनफसल मुहर्रमा और बेगुनाहों का कातिल है ये मेरे बैकग्राउंड को देखो उसके बैकग्राउंड को देखो मेरे किरदार को देखो उसके किरदार को देखो मिसली लुबा मिसल जो शख्स हमारे बैकग्राउंड और किरदार का होगा वो कभी भी यजीद और यजीद जैसों की कभी बयात नहीं कर सकता है ये जवाब हुसैन ने उसी वक्त दे दिया लेकिन जवाब दिया है बुलंद आवाज में आवाज बाहर पहुंचती है जवानों को एहसास हुआ बनु हाशिम के कि हुसैन की जान खतरे में है तलवारों को निकाल के आते हैं अंदर और हुसैन बिन अली को अपने तलवार के साए में हिफाजत के साथ वलीद के घर से निकालते हैं अजदारा हुसैन उस वक्त शायद इमाम हुसैन सलाम ने इसको उतना अहमियत न दी होगी लेकिन इंसान जब मसाइब में गिरफ्तार हो जाता है तब बहुत से वाक़ात पहले के याद आते हैं अजब नहीं कि असर आशूर जब हुसैन अल हुसैन बिन अली बिल्कुल तनहा थे जब आवाज इस तगासा हुसैन ने बुलंद की है उस वक्त अजब नहीं कि हुसैन को वो मंजर याद आया होगा बन हाशिम के लाशों की तरफ देख के शायद कहा होगा कि वहां तो हमारे सिर्फ आवाज बुलंद हुई थी और तुम तलवार लेके चले आए थे मेरी हिफाजत के लिए लेकिन आज हुसैन तुम्हें पुकार रहा है शहदा की लाश वहां उस वक्त तड़प जाती है कि और जवाब बेजबानी में यही देते हैं कि अगर मशीयत एराई होती तो यकीन हम आपकी नुसरत के लिए आ जाते अजदारा ने हुसैन इमाम घर पर जाते हैं और घर पर जाने के बाद घर वालों को तैयारी सफ़र की तैयारी का हुक्म देते हैं यहाँ तैयारी हो रही थी और हुसैन एक अहम काम के लिए घर से फिर निकलते हैं जाते हैं पहले रसूलुल्लाह की कब्र पे आखिरी अलविदा के लिए पता नहीं क्या जज्बात थे हुसैन के उस वक्त कि बहुत रोए हैं नाना की कब्र पर गशी का आलम तारी हो जाता है आलम खाब में देखते हैं कि नाना ने हुसैन को गोद में ले लिया है खुद हुसैन फरमाते हैं कि आलम खाब में मैंने नाना से कहा नाना उम्मत ने बहुत जुल्म किया है मुझे अपने साथ रख ले मुझे वापस नहीं आना है लेकिन उस वक्त रसूलुल्लाह ने कहा था कि हुसैन खुदा वंद आलम ने आपके लिए वो मंजिलत रखी है कि जो सिर्फ शहादत और कुर्बानी के जरिए हासिल हो सकती है उखरोजिया हुसैन हुसैन जो आपका कदम है उसके लिए आप आगे बढ़े नाना के लहज से रुखसत होने के बाद फिर जन्नतुलबकी की तरफ जाते हैं और वहाँ जाने के बाद अपने भाई की खबर से अलविदा होते हैं अजदार और हुसैन यकीन बच बचपने की याद आई होगी कि जहाँ भाई हर मरहले में साथ थे लेकिन अब हुसैन मदीना छोड़ के जा रहे हैं आखिर में उस कबर की तरफ जाते हैं जो फातिमा की कबर थी रवायात में नहीं है एक कि फाति फातिमा से हुसैन ने क्या गुफ्तगु की है लेकिन अजब नहीं कि आवाज आई हो बेटा तुम तनहा मदीना नहीं छोड़ रहे हो माँ तेरे साथ साथ चल रही है 
अदादार हुसैन घर पहुंचने के बाद जब देखते हैं कि सफा सफ़र की तैयारी हो चुकी है महमिलें आ चुकी हैं सामान को रख रखने के बाद जब अहले हरम की सवारी की बात आती है एक एक महली महमिल आती है और बीवियां सवार होती हैं कहीं कासिम आगे बढ़े कहीं अकबर आगे बढ़ के सहारा देते हैं जब जैनब आगे बढ़ी अब्बास आगे बढ़ते हैं बहन का बा, बाजू पकड़ के सहारा देते हैं अदार और हुसैन अहल हरम के लिए इस सफ़र में यह अहतमाम एक मामूली बात थी हर सफ़र में यह अहतमाम होता था लेकिन अजब नहीं जैनब ने असीरी के आगाज में जब यह काफिला तैयार हुआ और हर बीवी को जैनब खुद सवार कर चुकी जब आखिर में तना रह जाती है बाएं देखती है कोई नहीं दाएं देखती है कोई नहीं अजब नहीं आवाज दी हो और रुफ फुरात की तरफ अब्बास मदीना में तुम सहारा देने के लिए आए थे लेकिन आज जैनब करबला में तना है हुसैन ये काफिला चला है जिस अंदाज से चला है सिर्फ हुसैन और घर वाले जानते थे लेकिन बेशक मंजर पर ख़त्म करना चाहते हैं कि ये लुटा हुआ काफिला जब वापस आया है और जब बरी हाशिम की खातन जब उन्हें खबर मिली और मदीने के बाहर काफिले से मिलने आते हैं हर बीबी यकीन दूसरी बीबियों से मिलती थी लेकिन सबसे मुश्किल सवाल जो होता था रबाब से होता था रबाब आप एक शीरखार बच्चे को मदीने से लेके गई थी वो बच्चा अब कितना बड़ा हुआ वो दुखिया माँ किस तरह से बताती असगर को हम करबला में छोड़ के आए अलामिनबून खुदा वंदवा कबूल फरमा हमारे गुनाहों को बख्श दे हमारे तोफ़ी आप में बाफा फरमा खुदा वंद जहाँ जहाँ मोमिन परेशान हाल है उनकी परेशानियों को रफा फरमा खुदा वंद जहाँ जहाँ शीन अली तकफीरी अफवाज के टारगेट बने हुए हैं खुदा वंद उनको अपने हिफ़मान में रख और तकफीरी अफवाज की जितनी ताकत है उसको नीस्त नाबूद फरमा इमाम के ूर में ताजिल फरमा रबाना तकबल मिन्न कंत समीम मातम हुसैन